Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Jury CAD design is not hard at all if you know the correct way to build the model. Today I'm going to show you just three, four simple commands to make this ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we get started, there's a few things we need to think about when we do any of the design like this. First of all, this is more like uh, right at this spot. This is more like a, a half of the channel set. So the stone will need to cut in into the metal here uh, in order to hold the stone on that side. Now the other side is actually holding on the prong. The second thing is you do not want to have the wall too tall. Otherwise the stone will get really dark and make sure you, the coolant of the stone is not stick it out from the bottom of the ring shank and so for this ring and that will be more comfortable to wear it all right that's starting from the scratch we are going to starting a ring from the front view with the circle command uh, for the diameter i want it to be 16 and for you you can use any size and then i'm going to bring in a stone for whatever size that you're going to use and you can download the stone at the description below and i'm just gonna move the stone on the side it's not set yet we can we can change it later if you want to the stone doesn't have to be too tall or too low uh, you just need to be uh, away from the ring rail for the stone let's use the arc command and snapping into the vertex and we're gonna have something similar like this the size will be changing so if that doesn't fit that's okay uh, the second things we wanted to do is to draw a line roughly about like this right instead of drawing the curve i like to use the blend command we're gonna use the blend curve i'm gonna blend in between here and here and then to get this one all right uh, since it's a symmetrical i'm just going to mirror to the other side like this and join those three together i usually like to do is to edit those oh and by the way the front view you see this is snapping like that so we need to make sure it's flat so let's go ahead to project to c plane on my top view and we want to delete the input so you will be flattened to the construction plane all right so that's that first of all i would like to rebuild this guy to be a odd number so it was a 13 point so if we stay with the 13 point you see like how pointy that is so maybe i want to do the 17 point so i will get something like this and then this is the time you can start editing the shape to making into the shape that you like and i think the shape like this it might be okay so the next things i wanted to do is draw a straight line make sure it's from the quadrant here and go like this and draw another straight line go like this this is actually going to be the ring shank uh, the shape of my ring so i'm going to use the trim command to trim the one in the middle here here and like that okay so this curve right here so let me go ahead to join this one all right so this is the curve uh, is actually our ring shank now this curve right here need to follow this curve on the top portion here so i'm going to coming into my perspective and showing you with the command for curve from two view so this curve will be follow this shape right here and you're going to see this one let me turning into the green color here we can use our original curve and to trim off this guy right here this guy right here all right so we just need the top portion there all right and you can rebuild this guy if you want to let's give it a try by creating the shape first so first shape i wanted to do is to do the um profile and for this profile i want a conic corner for about this high and for about this why it doesn't have to be like really round it's just a little bit radius on the edge and you just need a stone cutting a little bit and just need to make sure that the circle that we have originally let me draw it again with the diameter we have the the stone doesn't get close in there all right and then if that is the case you can make this a bit longer if you want to and just move it down a little bit maybe that'll look prettier okay 
And the on the other side, we will have two profile here. And since they are going to be the same, I'm going to draw just the first one. Again, using the conic corner on my rectangle, I'm going to draw something look like this. Okay, and let's go ahead to moving this guy to this point and making a copy from this end to this end. Okay. Now let's go ahead to sweep it and see how it look. Let's go sweep one. You got this one. You go from here, turning to here, coming back to here. And then this is the look. I also want to record a history just in case if I wanted to change it. All right, you can see that the button is cutting inside all of it. That's okay. We can trim it out later on. But if you don't like to be cutting it, you can make them a bit shorter. And since you record a history, so everything should be changed with you. So that way we don't cut it like way too much there. Uh, you can continue to edit until you find a shape that you like, right? Or you can make it continue to make it shorter, going up a little bit taller so we can trim it that later. Okay, so that is that. Now the second thing we wanted to do is we want this guy and this guy. Now let me join them together. And we want to sweep again from this end all the way to this end, right? I actually don't want it to have a closed curve, so let's join this way and see how it goes. So we wanted to do the sweep one rail, and this is going to be our rail. This is going to be the cross section, and let's see what happened. And you can see it's coming out from this side, right? And it's, it's not what we want. We actually wanted them to go in. So this is the point that you will need to rebuild this one to be degree three. And I wanted to have last point, maybe 12 point should be enough. And as long as you don't sacrifice here, I see the deviation right there. So maybe we need to bump up for 16 and then click OK. So now what we wanted to do is coming into my top view, I wanted this going inside, right? So let me align them first. And now the top view, the my front view, and then I wanted to go is to rotate it this in a little bit, something like this. All right, so it will touch it. Let's give it a try. We wanted to um, sweep one rail and gonna pick up this curve. And you want to record a history just in case we can change it. All right, so apparently this is not coming enough. So since we record a history, we can pick up this curve and we can pick up the point that we want them to come back a little bit more. So maybe all those points in my front view and I want to rotate it a little bit more. All right, so if that look right to you, we are going to pick up this curve again and using the sweep one rail and do on the other side. All right, so for the bottom of the uh, stone, we need to have an under bezel. So let's go ahead to create a cylinder and simply snapping into the vertex and I wanted the cylinder is smaller than my stone. Otherwise, you're going to see the stone, uh, the metal stick it out of the stone and it doesn't look good. All right, so that is our under bezel. Actually, it's too tall. So let's 1D scale it down and bring it down a little bit. We also need a prong. So I simply just going to draw a straight line about like this. And at this one, I'm going to pipe it for the roughly the size like this. All right, and if, if it's too tall because we're adding the cap, you can always 1D scale it down. And so that will be our ring today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a lot more for you today. If you wanted to be a jewelry cat designer, I wanted to show you the three most important things to boost your jewelry cat design skill. This is a completely free webinar and the link is in the description below. Check it out and let me know how you like it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.